Hi guys and welcome to a new series on a new channel and we're going to go with Cork City. Now my reason for this is because the Irish League is not the best league. I sort of see them as like a championship sort of side, not with the quality but in the sense of most teams are as good as each other. Apart from obviously when you go down the league into the next league they do drop down a lot in quality but Again, the reason to be Cork City is because they've got to finish third, so they've got the foundations of a decent team. Good bit of history on them as well. I believe they won the league last year. Yep, they did. You know, finished in second um, in the last couple of years as well, so that's quite good. Um, they have decent finances. Stadium's not a bad size. I don't know how big the others are in the country. Yeah, it's one of the biggest stadiums in the country. So, should hopefully be able to get a lot of our income through that. Training is okay. Training facilities are alright. Youth facilities, yeah, so they're just as good as well. Uh, that is the big one, Champions League. Now, I know you're not going to get very far. Maybe if we get through like one round, we might be able to get a bit of competition money. But um, that's also our best way of getting our reputation up, which would be massive to attract bigger players, obviously. If we check the squad quickly, it's not a massive squad, to be honest. The age range is pretty good. There's a couple of oldies in there. I don't tend to have a player older than 30 normally. It's just a, a rule that I tend to have. But let's get started, and uh, I'll see you in a sec. But the first thing I want to do is just have a little look at the club's history, sort of get a feel for who they are and what they're about. So yeah, we know Republic of Ireland, finished third. Reputation's only two star. I think that's pretty good for the league, but obviously that's not overall that great. The year founded in 1984, so they're quite a young team. Not been around that long. I don't know if there was like an older version before and they've been rebranded or anything like that. But, um, the professional, very good, means all our players are ours, get the full amount of training in. Squad personality, that's very good. Having very loyal, hopefully we won't have many upset players and they'll want to stay long term. Owner loves the club, it's always good. Training and youth facilities could be better, at least two and a half is the minimum I like to have, so that would be our long term goals for that. If we can bring the money in. Estimated value, two million don't know where that come from because I'm pretty sure there's not much money in the club. Yeah, quarter of a million. They've won the league three times, not that often to be fair. Look at the Cubs. Uh, it's been a... Oh, no, they won the Irish Daily Mail. I think it's their version of the FA Cup, I believe. So they won that last year. And the President's Cup. Right, so their key player is Carl Shepard. He's not a bad player. You know, his physicals are pretty, you know, they're decent, they're good enough. Mentals, mm, lacking a bit. Same as technical ability, that's kind of worrying, but then that's the league we're in. You know, no offence to anyone from Ireland or the Irish League. Right, a hot prospect. Not much of a hot prospect. Like, I mean, he could get into the first team, no doubt. But he's not that good. Alright, so I'm getting welcomed by the board. Cork City have hired Mr. Dominus, a new manager, 27 year old, reportedly. Do you like to be given an opportunity? Blah, 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 blah. Right. Let's attend our meeting. Alright, let's get it started then. Yeah, always want to hear more about the club. Don't want any philosophies yet. I never meet the journalists, to be honest, because they are rather annoying. And um, let's get ready. I don't do intra-squad friendlies either. I don't tend to play my friendlies. I let my assistant do that. Um, cause at risk of injuries and things necessarily, which is not very good. Yeah, meet the backroom staff. I do want to see the contracts because I've got a, a specific rule with contract renewals, and I'll tell you guys in a sec. Right. Transfer obligation. So, four hundred grand. Graham Cummings, he's he's not a bad player. He looks better than that Carl Shepherd. I think our assistant might 
not know what he's talking about. No injuries, that's good. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah, it is, it is a better overview of the club. Extensive youth recruitment, now that's good because that's one of the ways we're going to build our way up. We're going to get a lot of good youth intakes, hopefully, and then maybe either build our team from that or even that's where we could make our money. Alright, now this is a very important screen to look at because it sort of shows you the ability that you have in your current squad so that's how you can sort of tailor your tactic. So if we look at our best strengths, so we've got a hard working squad with plenty of players willing to put in required effort. Yeah, good. Long throws, that's good because I like using long throws. I use that a lot in mine because I, I don't know if it's a bug or anything, but it seems to be that a long throw can you can get quite a lot of goals or penalties for them or just good opportunities. So I'm going to definitely take advantage of that. Yeah, that's good. I like to play sort of high pressing football, so aggression would be very good. Um, so what else we got? So there are a number of talent gems. Oh, I disagree with that, but you know, yeah, I disagree with these. But so no, we've got good things up. But let's have a look at the weaknesses. So I've got no money, which we knew that'd be a thing anyway. Not much depth, quality depth and goal. But yeah, so there's a lot of dude. Goalkeeping looks specifically bad. Decision making, oh yeah, it's very not good with goalkeepers. So that's going to be a problem. I think we're going to concede a lot this year. I'm a quite a slow team. But, um, you know, we do it with, do it with right. So I'll sort out all the... Uh, all the background stuff, like I'll hire all the staff I want and that. I'll show you who they are when I've got them and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll see you in a couple of in-game days. Just thought I'd come back as I've chosen the main part of my coaching staff and generic staff now. So let's have, let's have a look. So I've hired Erwin and Vandenberg as assistant. Now, looking at stats, I know his man of manage management isn't great, but for what we could afford wage-wise, it was the best that we could get. Cause for me, the most important thing is obviously the player judging ability and the potential, because that's how you really, like, a lot of people either go by just stats or just by the star. I like to go by both, but so it, it's good to have the star rating as well. Um, man, man management does need to get better, but if you overall look... Like, he's got some good coaching, and I'll, I'll go through the coaching in a minute. But, um, so yeah, so he's not a bad choice for now, at least. Obviously, he's got to learn English, which is not great, because we've got to pay for that. But, you know, do what we must. So, the head of youth is a regen called Owen Murphy. Again, he's not bad for the level we're at. Yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll do for a year or so, anyway. So, you've got the goalkeeping coach, who's a kept, who I think is actually a club legend. Phil Harrington, um, he's not that great, I'm thinking of changing him, but because he's a club legend, I kind of want to keep him around on the back, because it helps the player with morale and stuff like that when they're training. On to the staff responsibilities, right, I have a set sort of thing I always do, so if we go through that, um, I always make my director of football go for players for the future and for now, it, they seem to find gems that I otherwise wouldn't or couldn't because of scouting limits. I also make them off like look off of the players out that I'm putting up for sale again whether it's youngsters or current because it's just something less for me to worry about I don't know, generally put an asking price I sort of haggle when I get the offer but at least they help you getting the offers out I make my head of youth renew contracts for my youngsters but I always do the adult contracts because I don't like having Year, um, yearly bonuses and if it's a minimum release clause I try and get it to what I want I tailor it to myself otherwise you're going to lose some very good players for almost nothing so yeah you want your chief scout doing the assignments as well I mean you can do them yourself but I'm a bit lazy I prefer how doing it and I'll just sort of see what comes through but then I'll deal with them when they come through same with my uh, training I let my assistant do the general training but I do individual training because you've got to tailor it around your tactic 
and if you want to learn a new position and that and it's just easier if you can sort that yourself um, and it, it, pretty much with with the first team responsibilities most of it I let my assistant do the only one I'd say is when it's speaking about new signs I let my director do it just because he's the one going for them generally everything else my assistant manager can do it's not a problem other than player search advice to be fair I let my chief scout do that obviously people have different preferences so don't take what I do as law as what you should do on football manager I mean I've been playing it for quite a few years but uh, even now to this day I still learn things you know I don't normally do any of this other stuff but that's the staff responsibilities and the staff done Looking at our expectations, it's a bit of a strange one because we're expected to finish in the top half. So that's that's fine because I think there's only twelve, ten teams in the league. So third would be you know top half-ish really because fifth is mid place. So um, but the weird thing is that we're not they're not bothered about any of the cups. So it literally is just the league they're trying to get us to do well in, which is um a bit of an odd one. You'd think they'd at least care about one cup, but yeah, is what it is. Now training's a tricky one because I don't I don't do training like I let my staff do that my assistant does that but on coaches what I normally do is you get your assignments here and what I normally do is I get one like one coach for the individual rating so you can get a decent star on this and keep the light load like the load quite good so what I do is I normally have a staff member for each one and then I would be doing all of them just to even out the workload but being at this sort of smaller club you can't have that many coaches so we're going to have to basically hire any staff that any coach that we find good and I'll ask my assistant just to sort of even it out and make it good because it's very poor at the moment but as we go on we'll find some I don't tend to look myself at this sort of level I'm moving on to tactics this is the tactic I want to start with I've made it myself I'm not the most tactically minded manager out there um, I tend to just use presets for that I've seen on the workshop and stuff like that but I wanted to build my own and this is it and I've used it on a couple of personal saves and it's done quite well I tend to concede a lot of goals but I also you know I, I tend to outscore the other teams I even get a good result against the the best teams in the leagues but I've always played with like an underdog team so it'd be interesting to see how I get on with one of the better teams in the league although that obviously their overall ability is different but yeah, so this is what I want to go for. I want to go for a supporting sweeper keeper, you know, to come out and support the two ball playing centre backs because they might obviously go for a run and play out with the ball. So um, you got that, and then also same with the deep line playmaker. He's going to sit back into the hole here a bit and you know keep hold of the ball, play out the nice passes. Hopefully to like the box to box or up to the inside forwards. But um, yeah, so I'll see the box to box midfielder, everyone knows what they do. They basically be running around like a headless chicken, back and forth, attacking and defending. Great stuff. Uh, supporting wing back. So basically, I like inside forwards. I don't like having wingers because I like them to get the ball. Preferably, you have the opposite foot. So if they're on the left, they want to be right footed and vice versa. So they get the ball and they'll cut inside with the option of the wing back then to sort of take over the winger role. So they'll run up, overlap. And sort of do what a boxer box would do, but just down the wings, like majorly. Um, and I've decided to go with a shadow striker. I don't. I normally play with a defensive midfielder, but I want to go a bit more attacking. So obviously you've got your shadow striker to hopefully overtake the false nine and swap it a lot. And he's going to come back and sit in the hole and let these three come into attack. So in theory it's going to work, but we'll see how it works in this league. That's it for this episode though, guys. Um, tune in for the next episode. And we will hopefully get our friendlies done at least and possibly look at some new players come in. But yeah, I hope you like this episode. I look forward to seeing you here to watch the rest of the series. If you like it, I appreciate a like and subscribe. And uh, tell your friends about it. See you next time.